So I will get started. So hi, I'm Amber from Influencer Updates on Instagram and tonight I'm going to be talking about Sammy Robinson, Roxy Jasenko and the Abby Chatfield versus Dom and Ella feud that's been happening this week. So I'll get started on the Sammy Robinson one. So she had an interview this week with her friend Lily Brown and I really, really love Lily Brown's podcast. It's called Red Hot The Pod. I get a lot of people messaging me saying that they can't listen to her podcast because she talks so loud and she talks over her guests, but I really enjoy her interview style. Like she interviews all these people that she knows, like you can tell that she's good friends with them and she gets juicy information out of them. It's not just the whole like, oh, you know, how did you get your following? Like, you know, right from the start sort of interview. It's very much like current sort of topics. And I feel that, yeah, I really like that she's loud and fun to listen to. She's not just boring. I really, really enjoy her podcast. I wish that Lily Brown would unblock me. That would just be a dream come true. <laughs> but she did interview Sammy Robinson and they were drinking together on the podcast. Interestingly, Sammy was saying that like she often gets accused of like having lots of relationships. And she said some, I've got the quote here. She said, I like having a boyfriend, sue me. <laughs> and I thought that that was really good that she just like admitted it and was like, oh, that is what it is. Like she's not offended by it, I suppose. So I thought that was a really good point that she made. She was asked about Jordan Simi and she just went all funny and was like, she mentioned so many times that Jordan's going to be watching the interview. So these um, podcasts, Lily Brown's podcast is on YouTube. And yeah, she just kept saying like, Jordan will be watching, Jordan will be watching, which I thought was interesting. Like, does she still talk to Jordan? Like, how does she know he'll be watching? But then she said like, she'll never air her dirty, dirty laundry publicly and that they're both just very hot headed, which I thought was interesting. And what, did, what else did she say? She said she's put up with a lot in her past relationships. So not really sure what that meant. Maybe cheating? Don't know. And that she's never felt genuinely secure or safe with any of them. So yeah, that was an interesting moment from her dating perspective. But the thing that I liked the most is that she said that she's not showing One Mile at Fashion Week this year. One Mile is her fashion brand. And she talked about a lot of like the logistics of the brand, like she's been expanding internationally. She said she hasn't done any paid work, like paid influencer work yet. And Kendall Jenner wore a one mile outfit to a Kylie Jenner sprinter event recently. And so Sammy is saying that that was unpaid. Like Kendall must have just genuinely liked the outfit and wanted to wear it. So I thought that was so cool. And she said that she's going to be opening her first ever one mile store, which is going to be in Bondi Beach on like the main sort of shopping strip down the front near the beach. And she said that she'd looked in Paddington previously where her office is, but um, I can't remember why she said she didn't end up going there. I think she just said it was hard to find the right space and then she ended up finding a really good one on Bondi Beach. So that's the update from Sammy Robinson. We don't hear much about her. Like she doesn't do interviews very often. I'm wondering if the reason why she did this interview was to announce the launch of the shop that's coming. I reckon that's why she did it. But yeah, she's very interesting. I really, really enjoyed the interview. Okay, the biggest news story of the week, or two biggest, so the first one is Roxy Jasenko. So this, this actually happened Friday night last week, so it happened after my live, and it just went crazy. So Roxy Jasenko, you probably all know the background, but she launched a $10 million house giveaway a few months ago, and she went on like Sunrise, The Morning Show, like all these big publications, the Kyle and Jackie O radio show, saying that she's giving away a $10 million house. People, including me, looked into the terms and conditions of this giveaway. And what it is, is it's kind of like those Adrian Portelli LMCT Plus giveaways where you sign up to become a member to gain entries into a giveaway. And that way it's not a raffle, it's a giveaway to members. So I think they get around like gambling laws and stuff this way. I'm not sure if that's true. I'm just assuming there's something going on there with that. Not just Roxy, but like Adrian as well. But yeah. And so with Roxy's, she has this Roxy's Bootcamp, which is an online course. And she was saying you can pay $29 to sign up for a one month access to her course. And you'll also get an entry into this giveaway. Or you could buy a package. The highest package was $499, which would give you something like 500 entries into the giveaway. So she's she came out on Friday night saying that 
she's had issues with the directors of the company like these two men messaged her on instagram and she didn't know them and they said to her you know we should do this giveaway and she like create created this company with them and was like right let let's do the giveaway and yeah now she's saying that on friday night she was saying that there was not enough money in the bank account to award the uh, the winner two hundred and fifty thousand dollars so yeah originally it was meant to be meant to be this ten million dollar house but if you looked at the terms and conditions it actually said you have the winner will get a chance to win the ten million dollar house and it was basically impossible to win like there's two hundred tickets and you've got to pick the two winning tickets to win the house so it'd be a very very low chance of winning but the consolation prize is two hundred fifty thousand dollar cash so essentially you're paying you're playing to win $250,000 cash. And she was saying that there's not $250,000 in the bank account. So she personally topped it up with $20,000 to make sure the prize was going to be there. Then the next day she came out with another video saying that she, what is, what have I got here? Yeah, she no longer has access to the bank account and she is going to personally guarantee the prize should the money not be available. And she's also going to refund 7,000 people who had signed up, which I don't know, like that 7,000 figure, that could be just something that she's pulled out of thin air. It could be true. Like there's been no proof of anything in this saga. But yeah, so she's now saying that the people are going to be refunded. I think she's saying they're going to be refunded and she's still going to be awarding the prizes. But then there's this other guy, Yusuf, I think his name is. So his Instagram is Yui. If you go to my following list, you'll be able to find it. So he's come out saying like he's the other director and none of this is true. And he's given his side of the story, which was that he approached Ministry of Talent, which is Roxy's agency. He approached Ministry of Talent a few months ago and said, you know, we want to work with an influencer for this giveaway. And Roxy actually volunteered herself and said, I've got the reach. I could do this with you. I'll be the influencer. So that's their side of the story. Not sure what the truth is, but um, yeah, it's all gone belly up. And she did say she was going to be issuing refunds this week. So I've had a lot of people message me saying that they had signed up for her giveaway. So I might have to find out if anyone's actually received a refund yet. But Roxy was saying to process 7,000 refunds is going to take a really long time. But I mean, of course, there's obviously rumors that have come from this, such as they didn't sell enough tickets to cover the prize money. But I mean, I don't know what the truth is there. And the guy, Yui, he's still saying that the prizes will be drawn. Like he's saying, you know, despite what Roxy's saying, we are still going to be running this giveaway. We're still going to be giving away the money. But Ro Roxy is holding the bag and the timepiece hostage. So I don't think they'll be able to give those away. That's what he's claiming. <laughs> oh, that's a bit of a crazy story. Sorry if I didn't explain that well. But I'm going to go on to the third story, which is Abby Chatfield. So she's been feuding with Dom and Ella. So Dom and Ella are ex-MAFS contestants, and they now have a podcast called Sit With Us. So this week they interviewed, Dom and Ella interviewed another ex-MAFS contestant, Jack, who had spoken derogatory derogatory terms about another maths contestant Lauren so on his episode Jack had said to Lauren's husband put a muzzle on that woman when she wouldn't stop talking and so Dominella interviewed him and they were talking about the incident where he said that and they were saying they know what the producers are like they know that he has a short fuse and they would have been putting him in situations that would trigger that sort of reaction so they were sort of victim well yeah they were victim blaming and saying that like he hasn't done anything wrong essentially that's sort of how people read it abby chatfield stepped in and said that it's really disappointing to see the victim blaming here and the allowance for a man to speak in such a de dehumanizing way about a woman because she spoke too much and she went on to say like isn't that what Dom got told in her episode and she was really offended by it because Olivia had said that to her, you know, that she's boring and she talks too much. But um, yeah, Abby went on to say that she feels sick about the way that they'd given Jack a platform and they had forgiven his behavior, essentially. They weren't calling him out on it. So then, of course, Abby, I mean, Dom and Ella came back saying, we you know, he's a guest on our podcast. People demand these guests. Like we're not just going to hound this guest. We wanted to like hear his side of the story. 
we definitely do not stand for domestic violence. We do not stand for like verbal abuse. And we were just, you know, doing our job of interviewing him. There's two sides of the story. Like people are very much like with Abby, she very much attacks people kind of thing. Like she's putting, it seems to me personally that she's putting all of the blame on Dom and Ella when I think that it's Jack that needs to be getting the blame. Like Jack's the one who did this thing that was really wrong and Abby's just gone for Dom and Ella and everybody has like sided with Abby and they're all like ganging up on them, which is very interesting to see. I guess that's what happens with social media, doesn't it? Um, I'm just trying to see if I've covered everything. Oh yeah, there was another point here where Ella said that I'm pretty sure the majority of what Abby discusses is problematic too, or like I might be not, hang on, it might not be to you, but it is to me. I'm going her for when she's pushing vaccines and my husband's heart condition was accelerated because of it and another best friend is now on medication for the rest of her life too. So yeah, it very much escalated this this feud that's going on and then there was like receipts showing that Abby and Dom used to be friends and then... Abby came out saying that like influencer friendships are quite fake. She did like an impersonation of like when she'll meet somebody at an event and they'll be like, Hey, how are you? Let's get a photo. And they get a photo and then they're like, okay, bye. And then everyone's like, Oh, they're best friends. They were hanging out at that event. And it's just not true. I think that's what she was saying was the case with Abby, like herself and Dom. So yeah, she's saying that they aren't friends and yeah, it's been, a very interesting week. It's just been going on and on and on. And then Dom and Ella released a new podcast episode today where they tried to like explain themselves. And again, they said, you know, they don't stand for those things, but a lot of people still aren't forgiving them for not calling out Jack at the time. All right. Sorry. I hope I explained those stories. Okay. Because there was so much involved in them and I tried to just summarize it. <laughs> All right. Let's see. What are people asking? Just reading what people are up to for the weekend. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, Emmy Lou is baiting that she's starting a skincare line using USA Trip recently to film serums and today posted a pic of bottles. That's really cool. I'm going to screenshot that because I want to investigate that one. Roxy is watching. Hi, Roxy. <laughs> What's this person saying? I noticed there were girls doing photo shoots in the house who were known party girls, not likely friends of Roxy. Those business partners were in a different part of society. Yeah, okay, so this must be in the $10 million house. I, would, I imagine that $10 million house has been used for like photo shoots and things. Outspoken, the podcast, they were also saying that there's been a bit of debate over whether it is really worth $10 million. Apparently it was for sale for $10 million at one point and didn't sell. But, you know, what is a house worth? It's only worth what someone's willing to pay. But at the end of the day, I don't believe anyone was ever going to win the house. Oh, cute. Roxy's saying, yes, I'm watching and I do every week. <laughs> I accidentally called Roxy the other day. It was so funny. Um, yeah, we were sending a few DMs and I accidentally called her and I was like mortified. I don't know why. I just I just got embarrassed by that. <laughs> People saying here, Roxy has been in this business for long enough to always do the right thing, guys. That's true. She knows about longevity, doesn't she? Dom from Maths is also watching, apparently. I really do try not to take sides when I do these things. I know that annoys a lot of people, but I really try to like explain both sides of the story. Like you can see, I did that with the Dominella story as well as the Roxy story. Cause yeah, I'm not here trying to persuade you what side to take of a story. I'm just trying to like tell you everything that's happened. <laughs> Abby is dangerous when she has it in for someone. Yeah. I am scared of Abby Chatfield to be honest. Like she gets so worked up about things tonight she was on her stories being worked up about america just american culture and i agreed with a lot of the points she made but yeah it's just interesting the way she speaks about things
You can see who's here if you click the numbers. Lots of familiar faces pop up. Oh, I don't know if I should do that because it might like lock me out or something, but I didn't know you could do that. Okay, so the, this person's talking about Dom and Ella, their podcast episode today. They're saying that there's still no real apology. The episode is still up, like the episode with Jack is still up. It gets ratings because people can't believe it was posted, but they call it ratings. Well, okay, yes, I do agree. It is up there for ratings, no doubt. Like I still haven't listened to it, but I still want to actually. <laughs> but also I think this stuff is educational. Like I think it really has shed such a light on not standing for this sort of behavior from men. I think that, you know, like if everybody always spoke the right thing and never called people, will never call people out or never, like, I mean, Abby's calling the girls out we would never learn if that makes sense. <laughs> like it's unfortunate for Dom and Ella that they're the one having to cop all of this, but you know, a lot of people are learning from this situation, me included. Oh, I was surprised. Happy hour with Lucy and Nikki interviewed Rob Schneider considering his views. I was so disappointed. Yeah, I didn't realize this. So this week, Lucy and Nikki did an interview with Rob Schneider, who is from heaps of movies like Juice Bigelow, Male Gigolo. That's probably his most famous or The Hot Chick. And he didn't mention his views on the podcast, but I've since been told that he is anti-vax, I believe it is. Or maybe he's like pro-Trump or something like he's got, you know, extreme political views. And I didn't realize, but he did mention in the interview something about Johnny Depp's dog not being vaccinated or something. So maybe that was sort of like to do with that not sure but you know this is what I'm talking about how I said before about learning from things like Lucy and Nikki they weren't interviewing him about his political views they were interviewing him about his history of movies and like the, how they've grown up with his movies and he's going to be in Australia for a comedy show and things like I don't know, I feel like there's such a cancel culture and should Rob Schneider be cancelled because of his views on one topic? Some people say yes, some people say no, I'm not sure. But I really enjoyed the interview. It was an interview I did not know I needed, but it really did bring back so much nostalgic memories. I also know that Hot Chick movie line for line. I was actually watching it a few weeks ago with my mum and my mum was like, this movie is so, so bad. Like it's, she didn't find it funny at all. But yeah, I can see why people would be disappointed that they would interview somebody with such strong political views. I also found it really interesting that he mentioned he has three daughters and I found out afterwards that one of them is the singer Ella King and she sings that X's and O's song. Oh, I won't sing it, but <laughs> if you want to know, Google her, like you'll definitely know the song. <laughs> Okay, this person's saying that Dom did apologize for the Jack interview. Ella didn't though. She called it silly and ridiculous. This is a good point. That Abby is calling them out because they have a platform and they did something that was damaging. If it was anyone else that did the same thing, she would call it out. Yeah, it doesn't Yeah, that's true. That is true. SCL, SCL, I'm not sure who that is, post about Gaza receiving backlash and having to delete and post an apology. Missed initial post. Oh, I'm not sure what SCL is, unless that was about Steph Claire Smith. I know she posted one about Gaza. I've noticed a lot of influencers are posting about Gaza in the last few days since the Blockout 2024 thing has started. I hadn't heard of Blockout 2024 until my Friday Night Live last week when someone mentioned it in the comments. But yeah, it's like this movement where people are blocking influencers or celebrities that they believe haven't posted at all about the Gaza war or haven't posted enough. And yeah, apparently Kim Kardashian has lost 3 million followers, but I'm not sure if that would all be attributed to this block out 2024, but Instagram has been deleting accounts that are popping up promoting it. So it seems that Instagram don't want this to be a thing. I suppose Instagram don't want their biggest creators accounts to be blocked. Maybe that's why. But yes, I've noticed um, like Steph Clay Smith and Olivia Molly Rogers, they've both posted in the last few days about this situation in Gaza. What is the surgery that Ashley Barnes is having? So she mentioned a few days ago that she went in for like 
a, some sort of scan on her brain aneurysms that were found recently when she was in hospital for stress. And they've looked at her aneurysms and they've said to her that she's going to need to have surgery on them in the next six months. And she's obviously terrified about that surgery. And I would say that is the surgery she's having. Hmm. Any updates on Lucy Jackson's secret man? Well, if you look at the TikTok, the Lucy and Nikki TikTok, she reposted one of my videos, oh, video, no, photos, one of my photos from subscription. She reposted it and she's like talking about it and she's saying, you know, Influencer Updates is saying this is who I'm dating and I'm not going to confirm or deny, but this person has too much time on her hands or something like that. I don't know. She was just being funny. I get that she's laughing at me and you know, whatever. I don't care. I'm not offended because <laughs> people were saying in the comments of one of her videos, they're like, she's laughing at you, not with you. Like, you know, it's embarrassing what you're doing. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> no worries. They, they say on the start of their podcast, if you're easily offended, then scram. And I'm still here. <laughs> I'm not easily offended, <laughs> but yes, I think I have the answer to her secret man, but she has said she's not going to confirm or deny. I really like Lily Brown, but I struggle listening to her podcast because she always cuts off people when they are talking. It's so annoying. I do get that. I've heard that a lot. Like I've heard that feedback a lot, but yeah, I mean, I kind of noticed it, but also I think that they just feed off each other. I don't know. I don't think she's doing it in a rude way. Like she's not, I don't know. It just depends on what you're into. And I really like her interview style. <laughs> Abby is very intelligent and a great debater. That's why most people are scared of Abby. <laughs> yeah, that's probably true. And she calls people out on their shortfalls. Let's say that. <laughs> I'm sure she'd have plenty to call me out on. And that's probably why I'm scared of her. <laughs> I do think that, like I was saying earlier, I do think she's very educational. Like she actually educates me on a lot of topics. And I mean, I probably shouldn't be going to Abby Chatfield to get my <laughs> information on life's issues, but I do. And I think that she is interesting. Whether I agree or disagree with her points, I think that she still sparks a lot of interesting conversations. Oh, people are talking about my voice change. They talk about that every week. I, I don't know what that's about. <laughs> Why do male interviewers never get scrutiny? Just because you're interviewing someone doesn't mean you align with their values. Male interviewers, I think the male interviewers don't get scrutiny because it's females who scrutinize females as bad as that is. That's what happens online. Like I think the social media is predominantly females. And like, if you look at influencers, it's so many more female influencers. That's my theory as to why. And I think that male influencers would get scrutiny, but females aren't listening to male interviewers as much, if that makes sense. So maybe that's why I'm not sure. That's just my theory. Thoughts on Veruca Salt being one of the only influencers to speak about Palestine. My thoughts are that I think it's amazing that she's speaking about Palestine. Like apparently she was on live for like hours the other night trying to get people to donate money. And I think that that is really great that she's doing that. But I definitely don't think she's one of the only influencers talking about Palestine. I think that I'm, I see influencers every day talking about Palestine. And when people say to me, oh, you know, no influencers are talking about it. I don't think that is true at all. Um, I think maybe it's just the influencers people are, are following are not posting about it because yeah, I follow obviously a lot of influencers running this account and I see lots posting about it. If you would like me to send you links to any that are posting about it, I can't remember their names off the top of my head, but DM me and I will let you know. What else? Are you wearing foundation? Yes, I am wearing the Tribe Skincare Mineral Powder. That is what I wear every day and I am obsessed with it. My sister used to own the brand, so I probably got it discounted or free of some sort, but I do buy it still. <laughs> just a disclaimer there. Like I don't want people thinking it's an undisclosed sponsorship because it's not. I just love it. 
Mia Friedman has a lot of lost a lot of listeners from her podcast for not talking about Palestine. I definitely think that's true. If you look at the Mamma Mia Facebook group, there's a lot of people expressing their anger about Mamma Mia's lack of conversation around it. Tammy Hembro is losing thousands of followers a day, apparently. I don't know if that's necessarily because of blockout. I think it's probably a lot of reasons, especially like her relationship. A lot of people are, like if you look at the comments on her posts and stuff, that is a very big topic for her at the moment. Oh, someone's saying they unsubscribed from Mamma Mia. And that Lucy Jackson is funny, though, and I shouldn't be offended. I totally agree. I think that Lucy Jackson is hilarious. I love her. And just because I love an influencer doesn't mean I agree with everything they say and do. I always cop so much for that. Like, people are like, oh, you love Ashley Bynes. And I'm like, yeah, so? <laughs> doesn't mean I want to be her best friend or I agree with everything she says and does. Like, I find her a very interesting influencer. Someone saying Rob Schneider was on Kyle and Jackie O last week and he said he wasn't a Trump supporter but was supporting Robert F. Kennedy, who was a Democrat. Okay, I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> I probably should know, but I'm not big on American politics. Any updates on Adele's man? I don't have any updates. So there was a theory going around that they had broken up and maybe got back together, but she hasn't released anything, so... We still don't even, like, she still hasn't even shown his face on her socials. So not sure what the verdict is there. Yes, yeah, someone here is saying that they don't feel like Lily Brown cuts her guests off. She forms a genuine connection with them or she is already good friends with them. And it's like listening to two excited besties having a chat. Yes, that is exactly, I couldn't put it into words. That is exactly how I feel. It's like listening to two besties have a chat. And that's how me and my besties talk. Like we all just, we don't cut each other off. We just like come back to conversations. <laughs> like we might have two or three conversations going at the one time and it's all just circling around. And I think that's what she do does with her guests. Gosh, I've nearly caught up with the comments, I think. Can we talk about the positive impact Riley J's realistic running diaries has had on people? I don't know what the positive impact is of that. Like I have seen, oh, running diaries. Yeah, I don't actually know what her running diaries is. I saw that I saw her run your mouth, like conversation thing she did with Jazz Hand, which I found very funny. They were really good on it. But yeah, I haven't seen the running diaries. I'm going to have to look into that. Uh, yeah, does your sister not own Tribe anymore? She does not. She sold it back in August last year because she was having her baby, who she had in December. And yeah, she does not own it. She doesn't work for them either. But she sold it to another Australian company, so it is still Australian-owned. They are Melbourne-based, and it is still Australian-made. Who is the most family-friendly influencers you recommend for families? Oh, I don't know off the top of my head. It depends, like, do you mean for children to follow? Because I probably don't think that children should be following any influencers, to be honest. <laughs> Shani Grimmond, who even follows her anymore. Yeah, I agree. She does have quite a significant following on TikTok, so people must still be watching her, but I don't hear about her anymore. And, yeah, she's not someone who is super relevant at the moment. Why do people turn on influencers? What does it take to have your own hate page? Not much. doesn't take much to have your own hate page, um, especially with it being so easy to create one. Like Tattle has lots of influencers on there. Some of them only have, you know, 10,000 followers and stuff. I think there's like a rule that they have to have at least 10,000 followers. Why do people turn on influencers? I think that it's just the more people share about themselves, the more reason people have to be jealous or to have spite or to disagree with what someone says. Like if you are putting your opinion out there, you're going to have people that disagree with you and then they're going to create pages to talk about them disagreeing with you. I think that's probably the answer to that one. 
Any feud with Shani wearing Jagger and Stone for Australian Fashion Week? Is she still friends with Lily Brown? I think that she is still friends with Lily Brown. I don't imagine Lily would care. Like, I think that her best friend M Davies is still friends with the Jagger and Stone owners, Lucy and Nikki as well. I think they've all sort of got to learn to deal with each other at this point. What does Reese Hawkins do for work living in Bali? Isn't it hard to get an extended visa living over there? Yeah, I don't know what he does for work over there. I just don't know and it really annoys me. <laughs> and in terms of the visa, I don't know that either, sorry. But yeah, she's been there a very long time. I mean, he's been there a very long time. Sorry, I do try to keep these 20 minutes. It's now been 31. <laughs> Veruca, Salt and Michael Finch beef. I don't know what the beef is, but I have heard they've unfollowed each other, which is really sad. Like they were very close friends as of, I don't know, just probably a few weeks ago, they probably were posting together. So something's happened there, but I don't know what. It's very hard for me to find out because Michael Finch has blocked me. Annoying. Elodie and Chloe all of a sudden chummy with Lucy and Nikki. Not great for their brand, given Lucy and Nikki love the party scene and go out of their way making it known. Well, I believe that Chloe and Elodie also love the party scene and it does not surprise me at all that they are friends. They're all Gold Coast based. They all love the same sort of thing. And yeah, I think that it's actually really fun to see their friendship. I think that that will be really good to see that develop. <laughs> Love Molly Cook, but what is she doing in the US? Also, was there anything that made her get followers? I think that what made her get followers is being friends with Sofa Dofa and, you know, the other Sofa Dofa girls. <laughs> and I think she got a lot of followers also because she looks so much like Kylie Jenner. I think that that would definitely get her a lot of followers. What is she doing in the US? Don't know. Yep, I don't know that one, sorry. Okay, that's it for tonight. So if I haven't answered your question, please send me a DM and I will talk about it with you there because I love talking about influencers. If you're struggling to sign up to subscribers through Instagram because of the glitches, let me know in the DMs as well because I have like a workaround. And thank you all for joining and I will talk to you all next week. Thank you, bye.